Hey, it's uh, Chris here today from Huckabones Equipment. Today's video, as you can see behind me, is the KX040 overview. We'd like to be outside trying some equipment out, blowing some snow, but uh, it's snowing and it's cold out and it's a holiday Monday. So we're skipping all that and doing some inside stuff. So again, we're gonna do what we always do. We'll start at the front, work away to the back, giving you some key features. So stick with us. So the KX040 is a four ton machine from Kubota. Officially it's classified as a four tone machine. Um, again, weight wise, if you get an open station with a straight blade, it's gonna start around 9,200 pounds. You get all the way up to a six way blade on a cab model, you're gonna be up around 10.5. Whenever you jump into the excavator lineup from Kubota, you're gonna either have the U series or the KX series. U series is minimal tail swing or no tail swing, whereas the KX obviously has a tail swing. So again, KX, KX040 fits in the tail swing model. It replaced the KX121, long produced machine from Kubota. It was for about 10, 12 years. It replaced that model, just update it and everything, which is what we're here today to bring you as an overview of it. Whenever you deal with the construction lineup from Kubota, everything's kind of still dealing with uh, issues and, and getting them. Uh, and the 040 follows along with that. Being Kubota's most popular unit in the excavator lineup makes it probably the hardest unit to get. If you're looking to purchase one, it's gonna be a little bit of a wait on that end. But again, let's start uh, talking about uh, this fancy bucket we got on the front here. Kubota has a couple different offerings for buckets and thumbs, whether it be Kotec or H&H. Uh, &H. Normally, again, you're gonna be seeing H and H on the front of them uh, again, but they are hard to get. So that's where you'll see some other companies jump in like the Kotex. And we also deal a lot with Rivard. Whenever you deal out front here is you're gonna be able to get right from Kubota a 12 up to a 30 inch digging bucket, a standard being the 24. And then if you get into the ditching buckets, uh, you're gonna be dealing with a 30 to a 42 inch uh, ditch uh, with cutting edges available. Again, you can get hydraulic disconnect for the front of these through Kubota or other companies. Uh, and you gotta be mindful too, there is a number of different quick attaches that is available for 040s, whether it be in the States or in Canada. So you gotta be, I wouldn't say mindful, but you just have to understand it. There is a multitude of different ones, but H&H &H makes the most popular one in North America for, for the 040 lineup. After that, we're gonna be getting into the, some of the digging depths uh, and some of the working capacities of this unit. Uh, we'll be going over out front of the, sorry, I'm pointing the wrong direction, out front of the blade and then over the side uh, for your digging depths and capacities here. So let's get uh, dive right into that. Max digging depth, always very important. Uh, everybody always wants to know that. Is your approximately 11 foot flat bottom on that. Uh, your dumping height, so if you're going into a dump truck, uh, you're gonna be close to 13 feet at about 12, nine. And then last but not least is your uh, tail swing. What is the radius of it? If you wanna go completely right around a circle is uh, just over four feet on that at four foot three. And then you get into your lift capacities. If you get into the literature, there's quite a few different uh, areas where you're gonna give you a multitude of different numbers. But at the end of the day, if you're digging over the front of the bucket as close as you can, you're gonna be able to uh, lift about 4,200 pounds and you extend it out at six feet, all the way out as far as you can at 14, you're gonna be dropping down to about uh, 1,750 pounds. And then if you go over the side, again, over the front uh, blade, at virtually any point, you're gonna be at approximately 2,600 pounds. And then all the way out at 14 feet is you're gonna be dropping all the way down to 1,200 pounds of lift capacity. So you can see quite a drop on uh, going over the blade on that. So. After talking about your lift capacities, turning radius and other, other statistics there, what you're gonna to wanna to know is the blade. Most of the lineup either has a straight blade or angle blade, whereas with the 040, and it's the only one in the Kubota lineup that you are able to get a six-way blade on it. So not too common to see it, but it is a very special unit uh, to have whenever you're uh, looking to do a lot of a lot of uh, landscaping and stuff with uh, the six-way. Kind of a specialized unit, but uh, it's, it's proving to be uh, more and more popular all the time is that six-way blade. So, And then whenever you move a little bit further back is tracks. Again, you can get steel or rubber uh, through Kubota Direct. Again, these are your standard tracks uh, and then steel is steel kind of idea. And again, it's, it follows the same lines too as what you're gonna see on the rest of the uh, lineup is if you pop a track off, how to get it on and off, is there's a grease fitting under there um, that you're able to pump out the grease and then slide your track back on um, and then pump it back out to, to the proper tension. So pretty quick and easy system that way. So uh, now let's talk about the interior of this unit in the cab. So whenever you start talking about uh, the cabs on the old 4 is and it's a very important topic because you're gonna be doing all your work in here. So it's nice to know what your digging depths are, your lift capacity and everything. 
but you gotta sit in here. So you wanna know if you're comfortable or not. And the answer is, you might be. This isn't the greatest cab on the market. Uh, not that it's dated, it was a huge step up over the 121, and it's still a, still a beautiful cab, but it is not the nicest on the market. Again, Kubota's biggest thing they talk about is the opening to this door. It's approximately two feet. Is it nice and big? Yeah, I guess so. But after that, you're still maneuvering around handles, right? You still have track movement ones here, and then even this one's sticking out into the opening. So again, if you're a bigger guy, it's gonna be difficult. Um, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. And then whenever you actually get in the seat, is it an extremely comfortable seat? 100%. But again, I'm six feet, about approximately 180 pounds. So whenever I put this down, I am very comfortable. There is no doubt about it. It's been designed for me, it works for me. Whenever you're bigger or taller than that, you're gonna run into issues. There's no no way around it. They're just not a big enough cab, basically. It's long and short of it whenever you get into it is they're just not comfortable. Um, and again, uh, like I said, six feet tall, it's gonna be perfect for you. Get any bigger and smaller than that. Uh, there's not a whole lot of adjustments in the seats or the handles or anything uh, to adjust for that. And then after that, uh, most people like to talk about this display here. It was a huge update over the 121. This display screen tells you quite a bit of information. So good screen, decent screen, it's gonna be updated. Again, Kubota doesn't give us a date. You're approximately a year or two away. Um, potentially longer. They don't give us a date, so I can't give you a date. So again, everything's where you want it. It's nice and comfortable. It follows the same layout as all the other uh, Kubota excavators. After that, one button I want to talk about is the eco button. Fantastic. Um, again, we recommend all our customers just click that on and run it all the time. Um, again, hardly ever are you at max capacities that you need that extra horsepower. So if it, it saves approximately 10% of fuel uh, burning in a day, so, so use it. It's going to save you money and money is time and all that jazz. Uh, and who doesn't like to save money kind of idea. Uh, one of the key features about this is the DPF. DPF has been flawless in the construction lineup. There's ne there never was an issue, even whenever they were first out. You're not going to run into issues with it. It is uh, automatic regen. It just works. Um, there's no better way to explain it than that. So uh, let's... So let's jump to the back and talk about that engine and hydraulic system. Um, so now moving around to the back here, uh, you'll see our hydraulic system there, engine under here. There is a lot going on. Doesn't matter what excavator you look at, there's always going to be a lot going on. Limited space and lots of things moving and flowing. So whenever you start talking about the engine there, you know it's going to be 40, uh, 40 horsepower, um, again it's a Kubota engine. All your daily check stuff, very easy to find, uh, you know, whether it's your fluid levels, oil levels, uh, it's all there, easy to check, and that's what you want, right? You don't want to be uh, removing panels and everything on a daily check to, to make sure, because you're never going to do it, right? Um, same with greasing, there's some ports at the front, make life easy for you. After that, you start talking about the hydraulic system. One key fact to know is how many liters is there in there? There's 75, so if you blow a hose, there's going to be a lot of oil coming out. Well, how do I know there's going to be a lot of oil out? because it's 17 gallons per minute at flow out to the front of those auxiliaries there. So, and again, if you're looking for the total uh, gallons per minute, what it is uh, before the auxiliaries is your approximately 21, 22 there. So uh, lots of oil going lots of places really quick. So that's why there's so much there. Uh, after that, everybody always wants to know what your uh, breakout force is. You're looking at 9,500 pounds there. So lots of force, lots of oil going um, that way. One thing I forgot to mention too is safety wise, theft of excavators is it's just a fact, it happens. Um, so how can you protect yourself? Well, Kubota's now starting to offer uh, on top of your battery is uh, an extra little on and off switch there. So, uh, you know, people, if people don't know it's there, it's that much harder to steal your excavator. Uh, they also offer on the 040 is the coded keys. Again, if I took it out of the ignition, there's gonna be three keys. Your two, to, uh, you know, one to start it and a spare, and then your red key. Red key is the one that you don't wanna lose. You lose that, you're taking, the unit back to your local dealership and they're gonna be putting a new ECU in there. Uh, so very expensive and Kubota is moving away from that. Um, again, in the new units that are coming out with the U48 and stuff is they're getting into passcode protection that way. So, um, so very important. Again, so that hopefully today we're able to bring you um, some key facts to, you know, whether it be your uh, digging depths, your breakout forces, uh, your lift capacities and a discussion about that cab. Again, even bringing back that cab is, to this day and age, with this, the cost of this unit, is you're still going to be dealing with halogen lights. You know, there's a pair of work lights up front and then on the boom. Those should all be LEDs. Um, and then the cab itself is quite a bit smaller. Your comfort level is kind of brought down on that end. But so hopefully whenever you come out with the Dash 2s or whatever it'll be, is that they update uh, some of those aspects of it. But overall, bulletproof machine that's going to dig a lot of holes for you. So if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please down below. Thank you.